I'm going to call um, the June 25th, 2020 Group Insurance Committee meeting to order. Um, 1.01 was the call to order, sorry. And it is being broadcast on YouTube. I'm sure through the Washoe County School District page. 1.02 roll call. And we've asked that Veronica go ahead and do roll call for us, please. Robert Munson. Present. Uh, Celine LaRue Hatch. Present. Don Miller. Present. Rachel Drake. Present. Tony Marisha. Present. Diane Lyon. Absent. Uh, Mike Dixon. Present. Beth McMillan. Present. Eric Diamond. Present. Gordon Salas. Present. And Jeff Bazo. Present. We have Thank a you. quorum. Item two, items for presentation, discussion, and or possible action, public comment, due to the current state of emergency declared by the governor, members of the public wishing to make public comment above about an item on the agenda must submit their comment via email to the insurance committee at washoeschools.net. Any public comment received will be forwarded to I'm assuming the insurance committee, mine says OPED, um, the insurance committee um, or OPED trustee committee for its consideration consistent with the emergency provisions noticed above. Do we have any public comment? No. Thank you. 2.01, approval of the minutes of the January 27th, 2020 meeting of the Group Insurance Committee. It's been a while since we were together, obviously. <laughs> so um, do, do you need a minute to look through the minutes or are we ready to take action? Did we skip item 1.04? Oh, you're right, thank you. I skipped like, Yes, you're right. Thank you. We'll go back. 1.04, action to adopt, an, adopt the agenda. Items on the agenda may be taken out of order. The public body may combine two or more agenda items for consideration, and the public body may remove an item from the agenda or delay discussion related to an item on the agenda at any time. Are there, Jackie, are there any additions? to the agenda? No, they're not. All right. May I have a motion for the to adopt the agenda? I, Tony Moresh, Joe, move that we adopt the agenda. I second. Okay, we have a motion made by Tony and seconded by Robert. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Okay. Um, do I need to read the public comment thing again for two, Jackie? Do we know? I don't think we need to read it again. I think we just ask if there's. Okay. Public Thank comment. you. Yeah. Veronica, is there any public comment? No. Thank you. All right, moving on now to 2.01, approval of the minutes of the January 27, 2020 minute meeting of the Group Insurance Committee. So um, it says January 27th, but the minutes say February 27th. So do we need to correct it in one or the other places? February. And I believe it was actually February, wasn't it? I think so. So. That was our last meeting. February 27th was our last meeting? Yes. Yes. So we'll we'll get that correct and get that up. Okay. There. So the correction will be a, um, fixed on the agenda. Yeah. Yes, it, it was February 27th. 
Thank you. All right. So do I have a motion to adopt the February 27th minutes? I, Tony, move that we adopt, uh, that we approve the minutes from February 27th, 2020. And a second? Gordon Sala seconds. Okay, I have, a, I have a motion made by Tony and seconded by Gordon. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. 2.02, presentation and discussion of the Washoe School District Group Insurance Internal Service Fund as of May, 2020. Is this turning over to Jackie? No, this will be Rob Luna. Morning, everybody. I was just waiting for uh, the formal part to get done with. Um, Thank you. I, I'm going to go ahead and try to share the screen, I think, is, would that be preferable as well, far as just seeing, or how, how would you like to go with this? Veronica, do you have it or do you need Rob to share it? Um, I have it up. Are you guys not able to see it? No. Not saying it. Not yet. No. no. Yeah, I just see everybody, you know, the normal everybody. There we go. How about now? Yeah. Now we can see it. Okay. Yep. Now it's coming up. Okay, Thanks, Veronica. Awesome. awesome. So, okay, we'll go ahead and start with, with balance sheet. Um, and let's see, probably looking at the increase, the total assets and, de and deferred outflow resources is where I'm at there. You'll notice the increase is 13.5 million compared to last year. The balance had been growing um, you know, just because of increased um, collections on premiums and reduced expenses to begin with. But, you know, a recurring theme, which we're all aware of, so I'll try not to repeat it too much, is just how the pandemic put a stop on the use of, or I should say significantly slowed the use of non-emergency healthcare services. Um, you know, while, so while the expenses were going down, since the majority of the revenues are payroll deductions, our revenues remain the same, but yet our expenses really, you know, have that just abnormal, almost unheard of effect with the pandemic. So that's the main reason why our assets are up so large, so significantly. Um, if we want to scroll down just a little for liabilities, down to total liabilities, we're about one, roughly one million lower compared to last year. That's mostly due to the, the IBNR, uh, the incurred but not reported actual accruals. Um, the calculation of the IBNR, of course, is based on average, so it's you know, it, it factors in for, um, you know, the slowdowns in, in the use of services that have been occurring. If we want to go ahead and scroll down to net position, to total net position there, you'll see that for the year, we're a positive, um, the change in net position, we're a positive 12.3 million, 12.4 million which is an increase of 14.6 million compared to the prior year, um, where we were at 15.5 and now we're at 30, 30.1. 30 um, again, the, the spikes pandemic related, just to kind of illustrate a little bit, in March, our net position that is now at 12.4 million, in March it was 5.5. Then in April, it goes up to 9.7, which was a jump of 4.2 million in just one month. Um, and then in May, we were up to, we got up to 12.3 million, which was an additional increase of 2.6 million in just one month. So April, and you know, it, it's intuitive, it makes sense. I mean, that was, 
you know, the, the shutdown really happened mid to late March, but April was, we were about as locked down as you could get. And then in May, you started to see the slow, gradual reopening. So um, that's, that's why we are, we are that high in our change in net position. If there's no questions on the balance sheet, we can go ahead and go over to the revenue and expense side of the house. Um, Veronica, if you wanna scroll and I, the red. I cannot see the board. So if you have a question, um, unless you can use the raise your hand and the participants, just jump in. Okay, and if I don't notice something that I'm talking, just uh, ho holler out and not, not exactly sure. Right. How that will work. Um, okay, so let's see here. Um, Veronica, are you able to scroll down to page two? Yeah, and maybe, maybe a little more, um, a little more down, yeah, right down there to total plan revenue is fine. Um, it's right there. Um, so total revenues are up about, actually, I know we're not going to be able to see, see everything. Um, why don't we go ahead and scroll down just a little more so we can get to what was up there is, of course, just the comparisons of Anthem and um, Renown. So our total operating revenues down on the double bottom line there. Um, we're up 4.3 million year over year, mainly due to the higher charging higher insurance premiums this year, as well as a higher rate for OPEB. Um, and for the most part, uh, things are fairly stable. That um, we have an OPEB meeting later today. Probably one thing I'll just mention is we have transfers. If it's a few lines, three or four lines up from the bottom, OPEB retiree medical reimbursement. We have nothing so far, whereas last year we had 1.2 million. That's going to kind of true up, you know, after the meeting this afternoon when we have a transfer in there. Um, but to date, we have not we have not transferred anything in. Other than that, um, I, and I know it's kind of hard to make comparisons since we have the Anthem and the Renown, it's kind of hard to do the year over year, looking at each line side by side, but just looking at total plan revenues, um, again, you see that increase and um, the revenues have stayed stable during the pandemic. And Veronica, we can go ahead and go to page three with the expenses, please. Okay, um, why don't we go ahead and get more towards the totals. So we've got the Renown items there, and then a little lower we have Anthem. And then, yeah, just right in there is kind of perfect towards the towards the bottom of the screen. Total, total operating expenses. We're down 10.1 million year over the year. That's due to the combined effect of there being 190 fewer plan members this time uh, compared to this time last year, but also the, again, the pandemic and its effect on use of healthcare. Um, and I think Veronica, go ahead and uh, um, go ahead. We have a question from Robert Munson. Sure. Hi, Robert Munson, for the record. You said there's 190 fewer um, plan members. Um, do we know if we didn't lose the number of employees? So is that probably family members that were taken off due to increases in the insurance or changes? Or do we know? Um, Jeff, do you by chance have a have knowledge of that um actually rob i will i will take that 
question. Okay. Robert, it could be a, it could be a combination of maybe um, employees who have left the district for one reason or another, or taken um, uh, taken family members off, or um, members who have passed away. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, and Robert, no can you more... lower your hand? I don't have control over that stuff. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, we can go ahead and go, Veronica, to the next page, miscellaneous. And this one again, you know, just keep in mind, this is the, this is the little stuff. This is just the, you know, what what's going on in, the, you know, small office type expenditures and stuff. Although this time around, there is um, a significant difference in dues and fees. You'll notice that there's a change of basically the entire, that's really just one purchase. Last year in April, in April 2019, there was an, a payment to Nevada Health Partners for some membership dues. And obviously this year we're only at 200. We have not paid that. Uh, I'm not certain if that's just something that's going to be paid, if it's in the pipeline, or if that was a one-time thing last year. Uh, but that's the difference in miscellaneous. And Jackie? just just to interject there, that is when we were with Nevada Health Partners and with our hometown health contract. So now that we are with Anthem, that is not a um, due that we will be paying. Okay. Thanks, Jackie. Appreciate it. Um, and really not anything more on that page if we want to scroll to the next. So the next several pages, as I know we've, we're all familiar with the financials, we've, until we get to wellness, the next several pages take what we've, you know, the year to date items we've discussed and break them down by month. So it's kind of the same numbers. It, it, it's the same analysis, um, the same discussion. I don't know that there's anything uh, too much to point out. I think perhaps the best thing is um, if we can just kind of scroll. So we, we can see here the Renown and the Anthem PPOs. Yeah, and if we, and maybe just sit, there for just a second. Um, again, the differences where, you know, we year to date is awkward between the two since we have, you know, we're in the conversion between the Renown and Anthem. Um, Veronica, go ahead and scroll down to the bottom, please, and maybe let it sit there for a moment. See if anybody has any any questions. Again, total expenses. We talked about those. You know, expenses for one month quite low. Um, and I think we can go ahead and leave that page. And then these, the next two pages are. This first one, revenues, this is just taking a big year-to-date look. Again, it's the same data we've discussed, although, you know, this shows it every single month. So, and there's not a whole lot that, you know, may um, stick out other than, you know, anything we've already discussed. So probably we can go ahead and scroll to the next one. See if there's questions. And probably scroll again to the next one. Gordon, is your hand up or? No, sorry. Okay. No, you're fine. I just want to make sure. No, you're one of the few people I can see. You're, you're like me with the glasses. <laughs> yes. Gordon is. Um, 
let's see here. So this is just our, you know, history year over year. It, it, this one takes us back um, all the way to FY14. Um, Veronica, have you scrolled down just a touch or, um, and then just, you know, there's, there's a chart there that shows, um, and actually we need to change the, the header on that. <laughs> Update it for FY20. Um, go, go ahead and keep scrolling, please, to the next one. And then here's, here's our net position we've been talking about there at the very FY20 May, the very last set of numbers there, we see our 30 million 124, um, you know, probably just eyeballing this, you have to go back, I think, to the very start of FY14 before we before we had it that large an amount. Um, and then seeing that on graphically on the chart below. I have a question from Robert Munson. Okay. Yeah, yes, Robert. Um, so the um, net position is up significantly. Part of that is probably due to less fewer procedures. Some of that may be because of the increase in premiums. Um, if we continue um, this trend, you said we had to go all the way back, but before the, uh, some of the loss was the uh, insurance premium holidays and things like that. If we can we anticipate that this number is going to continue to grow, and what ending net um, position do we want to keep in reserves? How many months do we want to keep in reserves, and what would that total look like typically? Mm. Oh gosh, excellent question. Um, I'm wondering, I, and I know there's a policy on that. Um, Jackie, do you by chance? Yes, nope. um, we we typically have have operated. Can everyone hear me? For some yes. yes. Okay. Um, my little box wasn't lighting up, so I wasn't sure. Um, typically, we've tried to operate with having at least three months of expenses in reserves. Um, generally, that has been running around eight million dollars, and so that would be twenty four million uh, to have in reserves. But obviously, these unprecedented times, it's, it's been a little bit different. Yeah, th thank you. And, and yeah, it's a little tricky because, you know, we're going to have to, I don't know if we really, it's kind of hard to gauge how much, you know, if there's an element of people just skipping appointments and they're not going to be rescheduled. And then the, the big dollar items, the surgeries and stuff that are going to start happening. So I don't think we really have a good way to know what the next few months are going to be as, as far as, you know, it, it could flip the other other direction as if people, you know, all those deferred, especially the surgeries, if there's really a lot of deferred surgeries out there that start happening. Um, yeah, so it's it's a good time to kind of wait and see a, a little bit. <laughs> right, and we and we will be going into that a little bit more when we when we discuss the rates um, and and talk about that as well. Okay, thank you. All right, Veronica, I think we can scroll down to a wellness. Is that yeah? So. Um, so net position in the wellness fund has increased by 85,000. And of course, the dollar amounts we're talking about in the wellness fund are much, much smaller. So, um, you know, 85,000 is fairly significant, which means we've, you know, we've been profitable in that fund for the year. Um, and Veronica, if you want to go to the last slide, which is wellness revenues and expenses, to the last page, I should say. Okay, so the revenues have been fairly stable. Again, you know, mostly the good health fee of, you know, products of, you know, normal, stable um, sources of revenue. Um, the expenses are considerably down. 
um, the largest reductions there, you know, 69% down for purchase services and about half, 47% down for supplies. Um, I'm not exactly sure what, I, did, I didn't have enough time this morning to drill down on those. I mean, if anybody has questions, I'm sure perhaps Laura or Jackie could answer. Yes, um, as most of the committee members are probably aware, this, this last year has been a little bit different. Um, so we did not have some of the events that we typically have and had things in, in a different fashion than we normally have. So we didn't have the large health fair in September to kind of kick off open enrollment um, just because of the transition from um, healthy tracks with Hometown Health to our new vendor, Virgin Pulse. And because that was such a tight, tight time frame to make that transition. So we didn't have the health fair, we didn't have men's wellness or women's wellness. Um, so we're going forward and that is that is why you see a reduction in the expenses. Okay, thank you. And with that, um, that's the end of my presentation, open for any questions or discussions. Are there questions from the committee? Seeing none, thank you for the report. Yeah, well, thank you all for your time and, and patience. All right, moving on to 2.03. Presentation and discussion of the Wasso County School District Group Insurance Claims Experience Report as of May 2020. And, and just a quick note for the committee members, if we could ask if you're not presenting um, to mute, just so we don't have the feedback. Thank you. Okay, well, this is Tom Marshall. I'm not sure you can see me. I'm having no. issues with my camera, but I hope you can hear me. We can hear you, Tom. Okay, um, I think the, the key thing we're gonna be looking at is on the next page is the executive summary, which is typically what we go through uh, each time. And, and this one's a little bit unique and with respect, I believe it's the first uh, report that we've done with Anthem. Uh, we had a little bit of a, took a little bit of time to kind of get all that data put together uh, in the first several months, but um, we finally were able to do that. And, and this is uh, the report up through May. 31st, 2020. Um, so if we go to the executive summary, uh, you'll see uh, that um, I was just trying to look um, that uh, there was a question about dependents being down. Uh, and our report doesn't look like they're down significantly. Um, so I'm not sure where that differential was uh, that we were talking about before. But uh, as far as employee counts, it's up about 0.6 dependent units uh, down about 1.6 and total number of dependents uh, down about 0.2%. Uh, again, we showed the three different plans. Uh, we know the EPO plan is no longer in existence, but it's there to, to kind of show some of the run out uh, that we've had uh, with respect to that particular plan. Uh, the PPO plan, uh, you'll see that um, uh, the, the number of employees has actually, the participants from an employee standpoint has gone up about 1.1%. Uh, dependents down about 1.6. Uh, cost down, again, significantly, 18.9, 19.8, which basically is kind of what we've all heard here earlier from Rob and Jackie, that uh, this whole COVID thing has really kind of skewed those numbers at the present time. So kind of hard to, to really see where your plan's going. Uh, I think we have to be kind of cautious uh, with what the future is going to bring with that. The HSA plan, I guess with the elimination of the EPO, I think that's pretty significant. It's jumped up to 18.2%. So it went from 834 to 705, which is a nice increase on that HSA plan. Um, uh, you'll see that uh, paid claims uh, on a composite basis are also down 15.9%. 
Uh, looking at both plants combined, back over to the left, uh, net claims paid. When you look at the medical RX dental vision down 16.9 on a composite basis, again, this is on a per employee per month basis, down 17.4%. Fixed costs are up a little bit, uh, 58.7, but I think we all remembered that Anthem fees were a little bit higher than what um, we were paying uh, previously to hometown. Uh, so you'll see that reflected in the report. From a total cost, then once you throw in your fixed fees and your paid claims, uh, you'll see total plan costs uh, down about 13%. Total cost on a composite per employee per month down 13.5%. And I think the other good news in this, uh, if you wanna look at it, maybe contributing to some of these, uh, the, the reduction in costs is the claimants, uh, large claims, you've only have two through May and neither one of those has exceeded your specific stop loss. So, um, you know, if that keeps going for the year, that's certainly gonna be beneficial as well. Tom, we had a question from Rachel. Mm -hmm. So I just want to confirm and verify that this is a average monthly comparison. I know that's the title of the chart, but with the five months listed as current year and 12 months listed as the prior year, this is an average monthly comparison, correct? It's comparing the five months of 2020 versus the, the plan year of 2019. So when so you look at current year, the five months versus the 12 months prior year. In five months, we've spent almost five grand, where in 12 months we spent five, and, or, or excuse me, not five grand, five million. Um, and in 12 months last year, we spent five and a half million. That doesn't work. On average, yeah, that average monthly On expenses. average, okay, thank right. you. On average, average, but I was okay, trying to thank confirm. You. Yep. Yep, correct. Any other questions? I don't see any other questions, Tom. All right, thank you. Uh, 2.04 presentation discussion of the Washoe County School District's group insurance hometown health claims activity and turnaround reports as of May 2020. Good, good morning. This is uh, Jose Sandoval uh, with Health for the record. So um, thank you. Uh, here I'm going to present the uh, Washoe County claims uh, for the for the year um, May. And uh, as a reminder, um, the the goal here is 95% uh, of uh, paid claims within 30 days. So I want to call your attention to that top side, the total. If uh, you look at May um, uh, and the uh, percentage of pain in 30 days, it was 100%. And then the rest of the um, categories there, it's broken down by plan. So you also notice that there in the last uh, five months that uh, the volume of claims has uh, been decreasing month over month. And uh, we expect to see that uh, to continue as we receive less and less claims from uh, Washington County School District. If we go to the next page, here again, it's uh, the, the, next, the next two pages, it's uh, broken down just in the detail for each plan. So this is the HSA uh, medical, and uh, we had very few claims in May, and 100% of those paid within 30 days. And then the following page, this will um, has the PPO plan, and this is the plan with the highest volume of claims uh, so far. And uh, look down at May, 100% of those claims were processed and paid within 30 days. Any questions? Any questions regarding the hometown health around report? I'm not seeing any. Thank you, Jose. Thank you. 2.05, presentation discussion of the Washoe County School District Insurance Anthem Claims Activity and Turnaround Reports as of May 2020. I believe that would be Pam. Can you hear me now? 
Yes. Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay. okay, and hopefully you can possibly see me as well. So we'll start with the uh, medical report here that is attached. And we'll just go over May because this report is run actually mid-June. So you might see a, a little bit on the June tab, but that is not a full month. So in May, we had um, 9,276 claims come in. And you'll see, um, like previous reports, April was really low during the pandemic. May is starting to ramp back up a little bit. So we expect June and July to um, then come back a little bit further. So out of those uh, 9,276 medical claims, we had uh, 8,920 processed within 14 days. Um, we had 9,021 then processed within the 30 days and then the rest processed within the 60 day total. Down at the bottom, you'll see the total pendant claims. Pendant claims are usually um, claims that have come in that might be duplicates or um, waiting for additional information like authorizations, medical records, verifying COBs, and stuff like that. And then as those process through from month to month, they can sometimes get carried over. And you can see those numbers down at the bottom as being processed within 14, 30, and 60 days as well. As you scroll down, the, you will see a PPO tab and an HSA tab. Those tabs are just breaking out exactly what we said at the top, the total claims. Um, there is a blue line underneath the total claims, actually, sorry, Veronica, if you can scroll up slightly to the total one, the top page, one more, right there. The blue line is your RX claims, right underneath the pendant. So the RX claims that come through in the month of May, you had 6,487 RX claims come through and those are site of service. So those are paid immediately. Okay, now you can scroll down. Um, we have breakouts and then the following next page will be dental. Oh, right there, okay. So in the month of May on your dental claims, like we said, April was super low. May is starting to ramp back up now. We have 889 claims on that um, month. And within 30 days, um, all of them are processed at 100%. So in 14 days, you had 798 processed and the rest processed within the 30 day totals. Does anyone have any questions on the turnaround times? Questions from the committee? Um, I see none, thank you for your report. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 2.06, presentation and discussion of the Washoe County School District Group Insurance Wellness Program Report to cover current events and programs Virgin Pulse enrollment, new program year, and an and annual wellness mailer as of May 20, 2020. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> Janelle Dye for the record here, wellness coordinator for Washoe County School District. Haven't seen everybody for a while, so I hope everyone is doing well. And we don't have a ton on the wellness agenda for this month. We're mostly just planning for the start of the new program year. So current events, programs, and challenges, we just have the um, our chart here explaining or just showing the monthly enrollment over time for the program. So as you can see, it's really leveled out um, pretty much since we launched it in August. You can see the huge increase there for our members enrolling in the program. And it's like I said, it's pretty much leveled out now because we have all, about 85% of our population enrolled. So hopefully we see another a slight increase there when we um, start the new program here, August 1st. And then if you wanna go ahead and scroll down, Veronica, thank you. And then looking ahead, really the big, the big thing right now is just the reminder that the Virgin Pulse points 
are going to reset at the end of the new program year. So that's just your points. The points reset July 31st is the last day of this program year. August 1st is when the new program year starts. And just remember that your rewards that you have already earned do not reset. Those do not go away, but your points will reset. The new program year starts, new point earning opportunities all begin August 1st, 2020. And the annual wellness mailer that goes out to all members every single year, that will be going out end of July, early August, um, probably going to be more like early August when those actually start to hit mailboxes. So that's what we're looking at. I'm happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions from the committee? Um, Robert? Yeah, thank you. Robert Munson for the record. Um, do we know, um, I, I know we're probably not going to be doing a health fair and things like that, or at least um, with the COVID-19, but do we know um, how we're going to do flu shots this year? Yes, uh, well, it, it's definitely in the works, but we, we were planning to have an event. And of course that's not going to happen as we had originally planned, of course. Um, due to COVID, but we do have plans to offer screenings and immunizations. Exactly what that looks like, we're still working through that, especially given that things change pretty much daily. Um, but we are working through it and we're going to work really hard to try to offer that for the members still. Thank you. Any other questions? I'm uh, not seeing any. All right. Well, thank you. Good to see everybody virtually. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Janelle. Thank you. Item 2.07, presentation, discussion, and possible action regarding Washoe County School District's health insurance rate for 2021 with a 0% rate increase and no benefit changes proposed. Is that going to Lloyd? It is. It is. Hi, Lloyd. Hi, Don. How are you? <laughs> good. Good. Um, well, I, I was hoping we could just like end with that. That was such a good punchline. That 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 that's the uh, <laughs> that's the answer. Um, but uh, I, it obviously does uh, require a little bit of background and um, commentary with the with the projection and um, given all of the comments that you know Rob and Tom. Uh, added to the discussion, I think uh, I wanted to just dive a little deeper into the into the conversation. Do, can you guys still hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Um, so as, as everyone knows, this is the time of year in which we, we, we start to uh, do our projection. We, we, we conduct our financial analysis to determine uh, what projection we can make and the recommendation we can make to the district uh, for the upcoming rate year and, and benefit year. Um, as everyone has said, this one is a little bit weird and uh, we're struggling not only with Washoe School District, but with all of our clients uh, in this process because the unknown is such a, a, a large piece of the equation this year. Um, we started this process actually back in February, uh, March, um, started looking at some things and really uh, ramped it up in, in April and had some meetings internally with the, the district team in, in uh, beginning of May. So from our perspective, we're even a little bit further lagged and we're a little bit further back in some of the data that we have compared to what we most recently were able to look at with Rob and Tom. Um, and so we've got We've got a couple of moving parts this year, as I think everyone recognizes. We've got the change of contract from the renowned hometown health uh, program to the Anthem uh, program. And then on top of it, we have obviously shut down, shut down and shut down implications and, uh, and, and uh, ramifications. 
So, you know, in, in going through that process, we, we had to make some decisions. And part of that was we, we wanted to try to get as, as clear of a picture as we could, given that we had such little data with Anthem. Um, and if you recall, as, as Tom said, we were, I won't say struggling, but we were working through some, some transitional data issues in the move over to Anthem, getting, getting their data and getting their data in a format that we could, we could use. Um, and then obviously trying to, to reconcile that with, with what's going on. Um, so we, we started with sort of a, just by the books, you know, straightforward process, and then figured we could have some conversations with everyone about, from, about it from there. And when we look at, you know, the data that we were looking at was basically March through March. Um, and unlike the most recent data, the, 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 the costs were almost flat, basically down 1.9% from a cost standpoint. So when we look at the window of time in which we did our, our projection, um, that's what they were coming out at. And so when we, when we looked at our, when we calculated our projection, used trend, all the things that we've talked about in the past, we were just slightly below zero in our projection. And so what we talked about with the district team was, you know, it, it, there, there doesn't appear to be any, there doesn't appear to be a strong justification for a rate increase this year. Um, what do you do with that from the standpoint of when you have something that's slightly lower, you know, we felt comfortable with holding a 0% rate increase without any needed benefit changes to make up for any of the, any uh, future cost trend this year on, on the understanding or on the assumption that we don't know what the next few months are going to look like. And we don't know what the ramification of this depression in utilization is going to ultimately result in. As an industry, we're trying to sort of navigate that. And there's a lot of talk about, will this, will this be a permanent, somewhat permanent cost reduction curve, cost curve reduction with people using care differently or less, or will it snap back and have actually a, a, some increases in cost because people aren't getting care in the way they should for some of their, for some of their disease states and treatments? Jury's still out on that, obviously. I, we, we, we have no idea of knowing. We don't know how long things are going to last, and we don't know how long um, people are going to maybe hesitate going into the, their doctor or going in for surgery. But we do anticipate, and we are seeing from, uh, we're getting feedback from the healthcare providers that, at least from a surgery standpoint, there does seem to be a bit of a snapback and an increased utilization in, in outpatient surgeries, things that got postponed in that March, April, May timeframe are now coming back. They are having to staff up and, and schedule surgeries basically you know, virtually 24 hours a day to, to catch up with some of that. So again, that's, that's very unknown as to what that's gonna look like. Um, some concern about people that have prolonged treatment for certain disease, uh, ongoing disease and, and, and chronic conditions. Um, but then you balance that with, I think, just generally people not going to the emergency room, not wanting to go to their doctor, a, a migration to virtual visits, which we've seen a very big uptake in the virtual visits and, and, um, and, uh, and online uh, uh, doctor service, uh, physician services. So all in all, our, our best recommendation that we could provide the the district and, and that the district has, has, a, has, a, has agreed to and wants to move forward with was, was basically hold the line, see where things play out over the remainder of this year. And as we get into next year, we'll have a much better picture, we believe, um, as to what things are going to, what, what this really ultimately did to cost, what this ultimately did to utilization patterns, and what we're ultimately going to be dealing with for a, a for our into the future from a, a cost structure. So um, we, are at, we are at a re recommendation of zero that has been sort of agreed upon by the district and, and that's how they would like to, that's what they'd like to present to you all and, and, and get your blessing for. So I don't know, Jack, if you had anything you wanted to add to that, but that was, um, that was sort of, I don't, I don't have any pretty, pretty graphs because 
I was going to just have a big zero. Jackie put a big zero percent up there, but <laughs> she didn't do that for me. No, I think the only thing that I would add, um, and I think I had this conversation with Don a little bit too, is that if there's ever a time for a zero percent for our members, I think that um, this would be welcomed um, news to them just because um, various members have been hit in different ways with the closures and um, the things that have happened and, and layoffs while hopefully not from a school district employee, but it could be a family member um, that has experienced some of those things, so. And I would like to say that when, if we vote as a commi uh, committee to take a 0% increase, when we publicize it or put it out to our members, we should probably also talk about things that help that, not COVID, but online, not going to the emergency room, using our online physicians, some of those things that are cost savers that we've been trying to promote as a, as a committee anyway, because we knew at some point those would help reduce their ins insurance increases. So really highlight some of those things. Like I said, not COVID, all the good things we do though. Uh, um, oh, yeah. sorry, Don. I was just going to say, absolutely. We're already working on that. Um, and what we're trying to do is put actually a video together um, to, you know, if the committee should vote for the zero percent, that we could do a video and kind of like, yay, it's zero percent, and then list those other things. Um, there's also some new providers in town that are offering some wonderful services that um, have already benefited some of our members, and I've received feedback, and so we would love to get that information out to them, to everyone as well. Mm -hmm. Tony McMillan. Uh, Tony McMillan. Lloyd, can you confirm what that percentage was down again? Um, the, the data period that we were looking for, uh, the March to March data was down 1.9%. Uh, your, your costs uh, through March, 12 months looking back through March was down 1.9%. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions, comments from the committee? Um, I'm not seeing any. I do hope that some of our providers too will continue to offer um, teleconference, tele um, visits. I know most of my doctors and husband's doctors all went to that kind of program. And I know that their billing is a lot less when they do that. And they could do the same thing over the phone. So I'm hoping that's a trend that continues for us. So I, I would concur. And I think that everything we're hearing is that trend will continue now again, because that, that a lot of that was a, was a function of Medicare changing their, uh, their rules to allow for virtual visits to be, be reimbursed by Medicare, which then mm -hmm. dovetailed into commercial, you know, all of us that, that get our in, in insurance elsewhere, um, also being able to benefit from that type of a, a change in, in practice and, and, and uh, procedures. Agree. I, I, I do think, I mean, th I, we all believe that there's going to be some long-term uh, impacts to our healthcare system for this. I, I am hopeful that they, many of them will be for the better and, and maybe for costs long-term cost improvement for some things. Um, we're just all super nervous because it's just so early and in, into this game and, and not game, but this uh, experience. And you know, we're, we're all just sort of holding our breath to figure out what's gonna happen over the next six to 12 months. Understood. Sure. Any other comments or questions from the committee? Um, Veronica, do we have any public comment on this issue, on this top item? No. Okay. So, so with that, I will, I'm looking for a motion. Robert Munson for the record. Um, I move that we adopt a, or adopt a recommendation for the Board of Trustees for a 0% increase in no plan changes for the 2021 uh, plan year. Or the 21 plan year, sorry. And a second. 
Tony Maresco, I second. Okay. Was that Tony or who did I get that from? Tony Maresco. Thank you, Tony. All right, we have a motion made by Robert and a second by Tony Maresco. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Um, so help me, Jackie, this next step is that we, our recommendation will go to the Board of Trustees. Will that be on their July 7th meeting? So because it's no change, um, I, I'm waiting to get clarification if that even has to go to the board because it, normally if there's going to be a change that would impact our members, then the board of trustees has to approve this, but we're asking for things to remain the, sta the same. But I think at the very least, we will look at giving them the information and letting them know um, the good news. And then shortly after, I would like to get communication out to our staff. I was hoping to get something out to everyone, at least to let them know um, prior to them getting inundated with a lot of the reopening stuff so that they are aware of the hard work that the insurance committee has been doing and, and what it looks like so um, that it doesn't get hidden with reopening stuff. Right. Okay. Um, item 3.01 announcement of the next meeting. I don't know, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we, we were waiting to see, um, what's going to happen with moving forward. And also, um, if the insurance committee voted on this today or not as to when the next meeting would be we had to get special approval to have this meeting today as you know the board has suspended all board committee meetings unless there are certain circumstances which we had expressed that we needed to get this information to the committee so with the vote going through i don't know when we're going to be having the next meeting so we will have to update you as we know more and i think that We'll probably know more after the board makes a decision as to what reopening looks like and if they lift um, if they lift the committee restrictions and and say what we can start doing. All right, we have a question from Robert Munson. Thank you. I just Robert Munson for the record. I just wanted to say um, thank you for uh, sending the reports to us and that if we don't have a meeting coming up, can we still get reports from LP insurance and from the district? Thank Absolutely. You. Absolutely. So once once we receive them, we will get them in and sometimes, especially working remotely, um, we don't get them in at the same time. All, all of the time. So we're kind of waiting till we have most of them. So we're not sending you one thing here and one thing there, but yes, we will get what we have, what we have out to the committee. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, 3.02 public comment. Once again, due to the current state of emergency declared by the governor, members of the public wishing to make Public comment about the items on the agenda must submit their comments via email to insurance committee at washoeschools.net. Any public comment received will be forwarded to the insurance committee for its consideration consistent with the emergency provisions noticed above. Do we have any public comment? No. Yeah. Okay. And with that, 3.03, .03, I call this meeting adjourned.